Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about designed experiments and so vo some vocabulary words connected with the designed experiment. Now if you remember, we had two ways to collect data. We had observational studies and a designed experiment. Observational studies are situations where you cannot do anything, you're just observing. A designed experiment means that you're actually causing change in the individuals that you're studying. Now, sometimes people refer to a designed experiment as a randomized experiment, and it's because there's randomness happening and how things are assigned, but designed experiment is a better term because it encompasses all options for experiments. Now, the first set of vocab words that I want to remind you of is explanatory and response. Now, in a designed experiment, this relationship and that direction is what we're primarily interested in. How does the explanatory variable, which remember explains, how does the explanatory variable affect or cause change, or how does the response variable respond to that explanatory variable? So this is our primary interest. The response is gonna be the outcome that we're interested in, and the explanatory variable is gonna be the thing that the uh, experimenter or researcher is controlling or randomly assigning. Observational units would be the smallest single unit that's being uh, studied. Now, in previous videos from way back when we started talking about data, we talked about observational units as like individuals or subjects. Uh, it's the same thing, but here we wanna use observational units because it's the best term in the de designed experiment world. The next thing we have is factor. Now factor can be kind of confusing because actually factor and explanatory variable in a design experiment, they're the same thing. So the factor is that thing that you're most interested in seeing how it affects the response variable. It's the primary piece of information that you're interested in. And it tends to be what the researcher is trying to control for or randomly assign people to. I guess not control for, that's not the appropriate term. So. Within the factor, you will have multiple levels. So you can have multiple things that you're assigning people to. So for example, if you were assigning people to different water levels, the amount of water being consumed might affect how well people sleep. And so my explanatory variable is water consumption. The response is how well people, um, how well people sleep. So in that, the different levels might be 32 ounces a day, 64 ounces a day, 96 ounces a day, that would be the different levels that you're assigning people to. Um, and then in the treatment option, treatments are actually, if you have more than one um, factor variable that you're interested in, like if we were interested in both the amount of water people consume, but you're also interested in how much exercise. Those are the two factors that would be causing a change in that outcome or the amount of sleep. The levels within the factor would be amount of water and amount of exercise. Those would be the levels within those factors. And then the specific combinations between those levels would be what we call a treatment. And then the experimental unit is going to be the smallest group of observed units that you're studying or that are being assigned. Now let's practice thinking about those um, terms and how they're used, uh, thinking about a cow and the different types of feed that it has and how it affects milk production. Okay, so we talked about explanatory and response variables, we talked about observational units, factor treatment levels, so let's discuss that. Here, our explanatory variable would be type of feed, so that's the factor that we're interested in, and the outcome or our response variable is going to be the amount of milk produced, okay? Explanatory response. Feed, explanatory, response or outcome is going to be the amount of milk produced. Next thing we have is going to be, um, what's our observational unit? Well, it would be a single cow. That's the smallest unit or individual or subject that we have. So single cow is our observational unit. The next thing we have is the factor, or what are the levels for the factor? Well, our factor is what type of food they have, and then the different levels within that is gonna be grass, corn, or hay. So we have three levels within the factor of food type, grass, corn, and hay. 
Now, in this particular example, we wouldn't have really a difference between the experimental units and the observational units just because of how it's assigned, how it is assigned. So here our experimental unit would also be a cow. Then when we talk about different treatments, it's actually the same as the levels because we only have one factor that we're interested in, which is type of feed. So when you get into more factors that you're presenting or more explanatory variables that you're trying to see if that affects the outcome or here in milk production, that would change the treatments that are being um, used or treatments that you have, and then also the experimental units. So that is our first discussion on designed experiments and the vocab connected to that. In future videos, we'll talk about some other ways to do designed experiments. See you there.